And now, presenting the field for the 86th Arkansas Derby. Number one is James Roger and Michael Robinson's Kavad. Chris Hartman is the trainer, and the jockey is Mitchell Merle. Number two is My Racehorse Stables Chasing Time. Steve Asmussen is the trainer. The jockey is Jose Lescano. Number three is WSS Racing's Barber Road. John Alexander Ortiz is the trainer, and the jockey is Relu Gutierrez. Number four is SF Racing, Starlight Racing, Matacat Stables, Robert E. Masterson and Partners, Doppelganger. Tim Yachtin is the trainer, and the jockey is John Velasquez. Number five is Cypress Creek Equine and Whispering Oaks Farms, Un Ojo. Ricky Corville is the trainer. The jockey is Ramon Vasquez. Number six is Secret Oath. Owned by Brylin Farm and trained by Wayne Lucas. The jockey, Luis Contreras. Number seven is Willis Horton Racing's Ben Diesel. Dallas Stewart is the trainer. The jockey, John Court. Number eight is Cyberknife. Owned by Gold Square and trained by Brad Cox. The jockey, Florent Giroux. And completing the field, number nine, Windstar Farm, C-M-N-W-L-T-H, and Sienna Farms, We the People. Rudolf Brissett is the trainer, and the jockey is Flavian Pratt. That's the field for the 86th running of the Arkansas Derby. They're off. Good start. Kavad and Chasing Time, a hard scent doppelganger. Cyberknife is in the mix, and We the People could be five wide at the clubhouse turn. Flavian Pratt will not have any of that. He's going to take him back and drop over. Then comes Barber Road, Secret Oath, and Unoho, and the early trailer is Ben Diesel. Around the clubhouse turn, it is Kavad. He's a length and a half in front of Chasing Time and Doppelganger. Doppelganger wanted the lead. He's done no better than third early. Two and a half to Cyberknife. Then comes We the People. Secret Oath is outside of him, and outside of her is Ben Diesel. Then a length to the Rebel winner, Unoho, and Barber Road is between horses. Only six lengths first to last. Up the back stretch in the 86th Arkansas Derby, Kavad is the leader. He's five furlongs from the wire and leads. Here's an early move from Cyberknife. He's gonna split horses and be a joint second outside, inside of chasing time. Doppelganger is four deep, and he's two from the front. Secret Oath is last, leaving the back stretch. Then comes Un Ojo. They Round the far turn, and Kavad has the lead, but Cyberknife is right alongside. Now Secret Oath is unwinding. She's just gone from last up into third, and look at this move from Secret Oath. She's within two of the lead. There's a quarter of a mile to run in the Arkansas Derby. Cyberknife has put away Kavad, but he has to deal with Secret Oath in the center. Then comes Barber Road, a final furlong. Cyberknife, here comes Secret Oath on the outside. She's still two legs behind. Cyber Knife, Secret Oath is not going to get by the Arkansas Derby winner, and his name is Cyberknife in front. Cyberknife won. Barber Road got into second. Secret Oath was third. Maybe Doppelganger for fourth. And now, returning to the winner's circle, the winner of the 86th running of the Arkansas Derby, Cyberknife and jockey Florent Giroux. Cyberknife is owned by Gold Square and trained by Brad Cox. Running time, 1 minute 50 and 2 fifth seconds. In the winner's circle, to present the trophy for the 86th running of the Arkansas Derby is Louis Sella. 
here with a very happy Brad Cox. A good day for your barn. Two graded stakes wins and three graded stakes wins for pilot Florent Giroux. This one owned by Gold Square LLC. Cyberknife scoring the Arkansas Derby, getting his very first stakes win and a very impressive way to do it. Now, Brad, you had said he's a tough horse to deal with, and he showed that in the post parade, kind of uh, making Frenchie have to belly back up after getting him off. Uh, but he made that great move along the backside, saving that ground and was clearly home in the stretch. Now, you said he was kind of precocious, uh, but man, what a way to redeem himself after that grade three Lecomte. Yeah, no, no doubt. He's, you know, we've always thought he was a great stake horse and a horse that could put us in, you know, contention for a Kentucky Derby. And, uh, you know, it's taking a little while to get him there. This is a sixth run and, uh, you know, he seems to be improving at the right time. Um, you know, he's proud, proud of how, how he ran today. Like you said, he moved into a hot pace. He split horses. He stayed on. And, you know, really honestly here in the winter circle, Florent looked at me and we kind of looked at each other. like, this horse really doesn't even act like he's blowing. You know, he's, he's, um, has a tremendous amount of stamina and speed, and uh, you know I think those are two key ingredients to get getting to the Kentucky Derby. He's in. We'll you know obviously see how he comes out of it, shipping to Churchill, and uh, go from there. Yeah, well, definitely when he comes back and acts like he can't blow out a match, that's certainly a good thing. And he looks like he learned a lot from this specific race as well. Yeah, he's all he, you know, he's the type of colt that's you, there's not a whole lot you can do with him in the morning to educate him. I think he just needs the experience in the afternoons. Um, me and Al Gold had talked about that, and you know, I just said, Al, you know, I think you know, a little bit like Monomoy Girl, she would kind of get lost down the lane a little bit early on in her career, and you know, have a tendency to not maybe want to run away from horses. And you know, as she got older, more mature, did it more. She caught on, and, you know, that's exactly what, what he's doing on, and, and hopefully, you know, he's got some improvement left. Well, a fantastic day for the Cox Barn, and you certainly have secured your spot in the first Saturday in May in the Kentucky Derby. So congratulations and best of luck in Louisville. Thanks, Nancy. I appreciate it. All right, a great day for the Cox Barn, and also jockey Florent Giroux scoring three of the graded stakes on the Saturday card.